you have learned that the vapor pressure of solution decreases when a non volatile solute is added to volatile solvent many properties of solutions are connected with this decrease of vapor pressure and these properties are relative lowering of vapor pressure of the solvent depression of freezing point of the solvent elevation of boiling point of the solvent and osmotic pressure of the solution all these properties depends on the number of solute particles irrespective of their nature relative to the total number of particles present in the solution such properties are called colligative properties as an example if i speak about the strength of students in a school it depends only on the number of students studying in that school whether a student is a boy or a girl whether the student is tall or short does not affect the strength of the school strength of the school depends only on the number of students and it does not depend on the nature of students who are studying in that school now let us discuss colligative properties one by one and we shall see how we can determine molar mass of the solute using these colligative properties we have studied that the vapor pressure of a solvent in solution is less than that of pure solvent raoult told that the lowering of vapor pressure depends only on the concentration of the solute particles and it is independent of the nature of the solute relation between vapor pressure of the solution mole fraction and vapor pressure of the solvent is given by raoult's law that is p1 is equal to chi1 into p1 not the decrease in the vapor pressure of the solvent is the difference between vapor pressure of the pure solvent and the vapor pressure of the solution so the decrease in vapor pressure of the solvent is denoted by delta p1 that is given by delta p1 is equal to p1 not minus p1 p1 not can be written as p1 not into chi1 so the expression is p1 not minus p1 not into chi1 which is equal to p1 not into 1 minus chi1 we know that sum of mole fractions of the individual components is equal to 1 and therefore we can write chi2 is 1 minus chi1 so we can write delta p1 is equal to p1 not into chi2 if the solution contains several non volatile solutes the lowering of vapor pressure depends on the sum of mole fractions of different solutes delta p1 divided by p1 not is equal to p1 not minus p1 divided by p1 not which is equal to chi2 here the ratio delta p1 divided by p1 not is called relative lowering of vapor pressure it tells us how much decrease is observed in vapor pressure of the solution with respect to vapor pressure of pure solvent we can write chi2 is equal to n2 divided by n1 plus n2 here n1 and n2 are the number of moles of solvent and solute respectively which are present in the solution so the expression for lowering of vapor pressure can be written as p1 not minus p1 divided by p1 not which is equal to n2 divided by n1 plus n2 n1 and n2 are the number of moles of solvent and solute respectively which are present in the solution for dilute solutions the number of moles of solute is much less than the number of moles of solvent that is n2 is much less than n1 hence neglecting n2 in the denominator we can write p1 not minus p1 divided by p1 not which is equal to n2 divided by n1 we know that 
the number of moles is equal to mass of the component divided by its molar mass that is n is equal to w divided by m so we can write p1 not minus p1 divided by p1 not that's equal to w2 into m1 divided by m2 into w1 here w1 and w2 are masses and m1 and m2 are molar masses of the solvent and solute respectively it is using this equation knowing all the other quantities the molar mass of solute that is m2 can be calculated you have studied in class 11 that the vapor pressure of a liquid increases with increase in temperature the temperature at which vapor pressure of the solution is equal to the atmospheric pressure the liquid boils for example water boils at 373.15 kelvin that is 100 degree celsius because at this temperature the vapor pressure of water is 1.013 bar that is 1 atmosphere also we know that vapor pressure of the solvent decreases in the presence of non volatile solute the graph here shows the variation of vapor pressure of pure solvent and solution as a function of temperature from this graph we can see that the boiling temperature for solution is more than that of the pure solvent why this is happening for example the vapor pressure of an aqueous solution of sucrose is less than 1.013 bar at 373.15 kelvin that is 100 degree centigrade now in order to make the solution of sucrose boil we should increase its vapor pressure to 1.013 bar by raising the temperature above the boiling temperature of pure solvent that is water therefore boiling point of solution is always higher than that of the boiling point of the pure solvent in which the solution is prepared as shown in the graph the elevation of boiling point also depends on the number of solute molecules rather than their nature similar to the lowering of vapor pressure a solution of 1 mole of sucrose in 1000 grams of water boils at 373.52 kelvin at 1 atmospheric pressure let t be not be the boiling point of pure solvent and let us consider tb as the boiling point of the solution the increase in the boiling point delta tb is equal to tb minus tb not this is known as elevation of boiling point experiments have shown that for dilute solutions the elevation of boiling point is directly proportional to the molal concentration of the solute in the solution that is delta tb is directly proportional to m or we can write delta tb is equal to kb into m here m is molality it is the number of moles of solute dissolved in 1 kg of the solvent and the constant of proportionality kb is called boiling point elevation constant or molal elevation constant it is also called as ebullioscopic constant the si unit of boiling point elevation constant kb is kelvin kg per mole now if w2 gram of solute of molar mass m2 is dissolved in w1 gram of solvent then molality of the solution is given by m is equal to w2 divided by m2 divided by w1 by 1000 which is equal to 1000 into w2 divided by m2 into w1 
substituting the value of molality into the expression of elevation of boiling point we can write delta tb is equal to kb into 1000 into w2 divided by m2 into w1 rearranging this expression we can write m2 is equal to kb into 1000 into w2 divided by delta tb into w1 thus by knowing the quantities w1 w2 delta tb along with the molar elevation constant kb we can determine the molar mass of the solute the lowering of vapor pressure of a solution causes lowering of the freezing point compared to that of pure solvent represented by the graph here freezing point of a substance is defined as the temperature at which vapor pressure of the substance in its liquid phase is equal to vapor pressure in the solid phase at the freezing point of a substance the solid phase is in dynamic equilibrium with the liquid phase a solution will freeze when its vapor pressure equals to the vapor pressure of pure solid solvent according to raoult's law when a non volatile solid is added to the solvent its vapor pressure decreases and at a lower temperature vapor pressure of liquid phase will become equal to that of solid solvent and therefore the freezing point of the solvent decreases if we consider tf0 as the freezing point of pure solvent and tf as a freezing point when non volatile solute is dissolved in the solvent the decrease in freezing point is delta tf is equal to tf0 minus tf this is known as depression in freezing point similar to the elevation of boiling point the depression of freezing point delta tf for dilute solution is directly proportional to molality of the solution thus we have delta tf directly proportional to m or we can write delta tf is equal to kf into m the proportionality constant kf which depends on the nature of solvent it is known as freezing point depression constant or molar depression constant or it is also called as cryostopic constant the si unit of cryoscopic constant is kelvin kg per mole if w2 gram of solute having molar mass m2 present in w1 gram of solvent it produces the depression in freezing point delta tf of the solvent then the molarity of the solution is written as m is equal to w2 divided by m2 divided by w1 by 1000 which is equal to 1000 into w2 divided by m2 into w1 substituting the value of molality into the expression of depression of freezing point we can write delta tf is equal to kf into 1000 into w2 divided by m2 into w1 rearranging this expression we can write m2 is equal to kf into 1000 into w2 divided by delta tf into w1 thus by knowing the quantities w1 w2 delta tf along with the molar freezing point depression constant kf we can determine the molar mass of the solute the values of kf and kb which depends only on the nature of solute can be ascertained from the following relations kf is equal to r into m1 into tf divided by 1000 into delta h fusion kb is equal to r into m1 into tb2 divided by 1000 into delta h of vaporization here the symbols r and m1 stands for the gas constant and molar mass of the solvent and tf and tb denotes the freezing point and boiling point of the pure solvent it is written in terms of kelvin delta h of fusion and delta h of vaporization represents the enthalpies for fusion and vaporization of the solvent we observe raw mangoes shrivel when pickled in salt water 
and wilted flowers revive when placed in fresh water blood cells collapse when suspended in saline water etc in all these processes we find one thing in common that is all these substances are bound by membranes these membranes can be of animal or vegetable origin and these membranes occur naturally such as pig's bladder or parchment or it can be synthetic such as cellophane these membranes are continuous sheets or films they contain a network of sub microscopic holes or pores small solvent molecules like water when pass through these holes but the passage of bigger molecules like solute cannot pass through membranes having this kind of properties are known as semi permeable membranes in short they are known as spm let us assume that only solvent molecules can pass through the semi permeable membranes if this membrane is placed between solvent and solution you can visualize this from the figure here the solvent molecules will flow through the membrane from pure solvent to the solution this process of flow of solvent is called as osmosis so when the solvent molecules flow through the semi permeable membrane from pure solvent to the solution side we call the process as osmosis now the question is how long this process will continue the flow will continue till the equilibrium is reached now if some extra pressure is applied on the solution we can stop the flow of the solvent from its side to the solution side across the semi permeable membrane this pressure that just stops the flow of solvent is called as osmotic pressure of the solution so it is the pressure that just stops the flow of solvent from the pure solvent to the solution side that is what we call as osmotic pressure of the solution the flow of solvent from dilute solution to the concentrated solution across the semi permeable membrane is because of the osmosis it is important to keep in mind that solvent molecules always flow from lower concentration to higher concentration of the solution the osmotic pressure has been found to be dependent on the concentration of the solution observe the diagram here we have a solution and its pure solvent separated by a semi permeable membrane solvent molecules will pass through the solution side through the semi permeable membrane to stop this flow of solvent we have to apply some extra pressure on the solution side the osmotic pressure of a solution is the excess pressure that must be applied to a solution to stop the passage of solvent molecules through a semi permeable membrane into the solution that is to prevent the osmosis we should be applying some extra pressure osmotic pressure depends on the number of solute molecules and do not depend on the identity of the solute particles so osmotic pressure is a colligative property and for dilute solutions osmotic pressure is proportional to molarity of the solution at a given temperature its molarity and not molality the previously learned colligative property were directly proportional to molality of the solution but here the osmotic pressure is directly proportional to molarity of the solution so we can write pi is equal to crt where pi is the osmotic pressure c is concentration r is gas constant t is temperature and we can write pi is equal to n2 divided by v into rt where v is volume of the solution in liters containing n2 moles of the solute if w2 gram of solute of molar mass m2 is present in the solution 
then number of moles n2 is equal to w2 divided by m2 and therefore we can write pi into v is equal to w2 into rt divided by m2 or rearranging this equation i can write m2 is equal to w2 into r into t divided by pi into v so by knowing the quantities w2 t osmotic pressure pi and volume v we can calculate the molar mass of the solute this method of measurement of molar mass of solute is widely used to determine molar masses of proteins polymers and other macromolecules this method has advantage over the other methods which we have discussed now let us see what are the advantages of osmotic pressure measurements over the other measurements this pressure measurement is around the room temperature and the molarity of the solution is used instead of molality as compared to the other colligative properties the magnitude of osmotic pressure is large even for very dilute solutions this technique is particularly useful for determination of molar mass of biomolecules as they are generally not stable at higher temperatures if we have two solutions at a given temperature having same osmotic pressure are called isotonic solutions when we place isotonic solutions separated by a semi permeable membrane osmosis will not occur between them for example the osmotic pressure associated with fluid inside the blood cell is equivalent to that of 0.9% mass by volume sodium chloride solution 0.9% mass by volume sodium chloride solution is called normal saline solution and it is safe to inject intravenously on the other hand if we place the cells in a solution containing more than 0.9% mass by volume sodium chloride water will flow out of the cells and they would shrink such a solution is called as hypertonic solution if the salt concentration is less than 0.9% mass by volume the solution is said to be hypotonic if cells are placed in the solution they would swell because water will flow into the cells the natural phenomenon which i spoke when i began this topic can be explained based on osmosis a raw mango placed in concentrated salt solution it loses water via osmosis to shrivel into pickle wilted flowers they get back the water when it is placed in fresh water a carrot that has become limp because of water loss into the atmosphere we can place it in water to make it firm once again water will move into the carrot through osmosis when placed in water containing less than 0.9% mass by volume salt blood cells swell due to flow of water into the blood cells because of osmosis people who are taking lot of salt or salty food experience water retention in tissue cells and intercellular spaces because of osmosis and this results in puffiness or swelling this is called as edema water movement from soil into plant roots and to the upper portion of the plant is also partly due to osmosis meat is preserved from bacterial action by adding salt and fruits are preserved by adding sugar through the process of osmosis a bacterium on the salted meat or candied fruits loses water shrivels and dies so this is how we can preserve meat or we can reverse the direction of osmosis if we apply a pressure larger than the osmotic pressure to the solution side now the pure solvent which flows out of the solution through the semi permeable membrane this phenomenon is called reverse osmosis reverse osmosis has great practical utility reverse osmosis is used in desalination of seawater 
a schematic setup for the desalination process of water is shown here when pressure more than osmotic pressure is applied pure water is squeezed out of the sea water through the membrane a variety of polymer membranes are available for this purpose the pressure required for the reverse osmosis is quite high porous membranes that can be used is a film of cellulose acetate placed over a suitable support cellulose acetate is permeable to water but impermeable to impurities and ions present in sea water to meet potable water requirements many countries use desalination plants nowadays